I've been asked to, to present an American perspective on, on these topics and discuss um, the state of and prospects for the, the bilateral Russian-American relationship and talk a little bit about the implications that this may hold for European security in general and for this region uh, in particular. Uh, and, um, and this is, you know, I should start by, by noting the obvious, which is this is, first of all, not an uncomplicated topic, but also not an uncontroversial one. Indeed, the reset uh, has been subject to criticism not only here, but also in Washington on precisely these grounds about the implications uh, for security policy and engagement in, in the Baltic region and Eastern Europe in general. Um, in this region, and as I say, to some degree in the U.S. as well, the criticism is that the reset has meant too little attention to and concern for the security um, uh, preoccupations and concerns here, especially as they relate to Russia. Um, and has produced for some time a strong feeling that the U.S. is simply less interested and engaged than it had been before. Now, it's interesting to note that, that there's a, a, a kind of an analog to this critique in Russia, or rather the other side of the, the coin, which is that uh, the critique being that the reset for all its good words and the change in atmospherics and the like has not produced fundamental changes um, in the relationship on issues of con key concern to Russia. Um, more widely, even for people who are in Moscow who I think have a more benign view of the relationship, there's concern that, that whatever it's produced, it's not durable. That the, uh, that the Obama administration is vulnerable politically and therefore that the reset is vulnerable politically. I'll come back to, it, to what that means in a moment. So what I'd like, given all that, what I'd like to do very quickly today is, is first start with a bit of history and uh, uh, say how, give some observations on how I believe the reset was understood at the outset in Washington, but also in Russia uh, and in Europe. Uh, then look at a bit of what's happened since, um, you know, what, what's it, what has it produced, uh, what has it not produced, uh, and then look at some of the current issues, um, uh, particularly those which uh, are relevant either to European security broadly or to this area, um, uh, Baltic security, Baltic Nordic security in particular. So firstly, as I say, some, some history. What, how, how, how do people view this at the outset? I think it's important to remember what I believe this, the reset meant to the, to the U.S. administration, to the Obama administration, or at least for most of it. Um, because this is, there's an aspect of this which I think is not very well understood, was not very well understood in, in Russia. You can tell me what it was understood here. And this is that at the outset, the reset was viewed, I think, by most of the administration in very instrumental terms. And what I mean by that is that, yes, Russia was suddenly having more prominence on the agenda. Yes, it was getting more political attention. But not because Russia was thought to be intrinsically, or the relationship was necessarily intrinsically more important, but rather reflected the hope, at least, that Russia would be able to be helpful on a set of issues that the US really cared about which was not Russia in the first instance, it was Iran, Afghanistan, et cetera. Um, now, as I say, this was not understood in, or, in, by large parts of the political class in Moscow. There, the, the initial reaction to the reset reflected much more the kinds of, uh, uh, the view of relations and, and particularly the grievances that were expressed um, reflected the, the views that we heard from Putin very much two years before in the speech in Munich and so on. Um, and, uh, and it exacerbated by at least the initial effects of the global crisis in 2008. That is, the U.S. was seen as weakened, uh, as preoccupied elsewhere. Um, the bad relationship, that is the bad Russian-American relationship, was the, was the Americans' fault. We kept hearing it's your guys' fault. It's up to you to fix it, up to you Americans to fix it. And we Russian, you need us, by the way, more than we need you. And, it's up, and so what we're going to do is sort of sit back and wait and see what you have to offer. This was a very widespread view among the sort of political class in Moscow at the outset of the reset. Now, there were some people who knew better. Um, and, and I remember having a lot of discussions with them saying, look, um, you know, if, if Russia doesn't act as if this matters to them, uh, and nothing happens, there's no movement on these issues that the U.S. cares about. It's not that there's going to be an explosion in the relationship in a year. Uh, but what it does mean is that the U.S. is going to, the administration is going to lose interest. And they're just, you know, they're going to, they're going to back away. They're just not going to be 
putting as much political emphasis, political capital, political attention into it. So act, you know, act as if it matters to you too. Um, and I think there were people who did. Um, uh, and indeed, um, uh, there were some things that, that were produced that, uh, uh, that were, uh, um, that were certainly were and are seen as, as useful and potentially important in the United States. I'll come back to those. Uh, but this was, it's important to remember this, that this is, again, this instrumental character of, of the reset from the point of view of the U.S. administration. Now, that's changed a little bit over time. And it's changed in part, I say this as a, as a registered Democrat, it's changed in part because it's one of the relatively few obvious, visible foreign policy successes of the administration. It's been a very tough couple of years. They've had a very tough agenda. And they haven't had a lot of big, uh, big successes to show. Inevitably, as happens with any administration, is they start paying, you know, placing a lot more emphasis on the things that seem to be working OK rather than the others. And that's happened here, too. But there's still. Again, this is, this is a change in what, what is still, I think, basically an instrumental view of what the reset is all about. Now, the reaction in Europe at the time was also, of course, as, it, as you know better than I, um, not so simple. Um, and, and for some, especially in Western Europe, uh, the reset was welcomed on the grounds that the bilateral relationship had, gotten, had sunk so far as really to be dangerous. We heard this a lot from one of the West Europeans. Others, especially in this part of the world, um, had better <coughs> concerns about what it meant for them. And, and uh, Imran's referred to, in particular, the, the famous open letter of, of July 2009. And here, if I could just add a personal note, um, uh, you know, Rod Asses is a very close friend of mine. We wrote this article on Baltic membership in NATO together, his sons, one of my godsons. Um, but we had a different reaction to, this, to that issue at the time. I, you'll recall from the open letter, there's a famous line in there that said, sub the effect of, our concern is that the reset means that the U.S. will make concessions to Russia at our expense. And as I told Ron, I said, that's not my, what I'm worried about. My worry is not about Russian policy. It was about the lack of Europe policy, that's, which is a different problem. That is, that at the time, there, what I didn't see was the administration articulation of a coherent implementable <coughs> vision of what it wanted to achieve in Europe in general, in this part of Europe in particular, how it viewed the issues here, what it, what it saw as the priorities, what, uh, what it proposed to do, and how it proposed to do it. Um, my, uh, in other words, my problem was not with Russia policy, it was with, it was with Europe policy. Um, to some degree, that's still the case. I mean, to the extent, uh, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, but in any case, whatever my views were, this, this problem about the lack of a Europe policy um, uh, in the early days of the administration became a source of real critiques, not just from Republicans, but from Democrats like, like me as well. And in fairness, the Obama administration heard this. Um, uh, part of it, they just got Europe people in place. Um, uh, but part of it, they heard this, this uh, political criticism. Um, uh, and the policy criticism, and they responded. A lot of it came through NATO and the, and the process to produce the new strategic concept or, or, or things aside um, uh, that went along with that. There was a generalized need, uh, recognition of need for reassurance and re-engagement um, visible of a visible and concrete sort. Um, and we've seen it. Iman's referred to some of the reflect the, the uh, um, uh, the uh, outcome of all this. It's a serious planning in NATO, which had been an issue for quite a number of years, but for political reasons hadn't happened. There had been a lot of informal planning, including in shape, but it, they couldn't brief it to anybody. Um, a lot more consultations about core defense issues, um, including nuclear policy, um, more discussion about what does Article 5 mean and what does it require now, um, exercises and the like. Um, so there was a, you know, the, uh, there was a change. Um, I think um, uh, my impression too, when I've heard it again from uh, from uh, from Evans, is that uh, things are better now uh, than they were a year ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, but there's still some issues, and uh, let me get get to those. What does the reset produce, and what does they mean? What does they mean? It seems to me there are a couple of things. One, from a U.S. point of view, what what's what's been good about? What's the good part? Well, one thing is, has been a change in the atmospherics. Um, uh, and I mention this first because it's, it's not in itself trivial. What I'm referring to is, in the Russian case, there is, uh, again, this is 
relative, but there's there's less strident American anti-American uh, rhetoric. Uh, there's still criticisms, of course, and sometimes harsh criticisms of American policy, from, particularly from from Putin and others around him. But there's less of this than before, and much more emphasis on the need for constructive relations, and relatedly a very different and much more muted reactions to American criticisms or to things that they don't like about American policy. And this reflects, um, I think, a sense that there's a more of a stake in that relationship, which requires management of a sort that we didn't see a couple of years ago. Now, um, on the US side, too, we see a lot more talk about uh, from administration people about why Russia matters, about the need to engage with it, why what it can contribute to the security agenda, and so on. Also, uh, arguably less, at least, overt public criticism of internal developments in Russia, which is in itself a source of criticism of policy. Um, but it reflects the view, which uh, is not a silly view, which basically says we're even on human rights, we'll make more progress um, uh, if, if Russia sees a greater stake in the overall relationship. Now, this is a controversial and complicated issue. Um, uh, but what, ha what it has produced is a lot less public berating of, of Russia on these issues than before. Having said that, the criticisms have not disappeared. Indeed, there's been more of it in the last year than there was in the, in the first year. Um, last, uh, just as some recent examples, in, in last August, this very strong statement that came from, uh, from the U.S. administration um, in response to the Russian use of riot police to put down this uh, uh, an opposition march rally in Moscow. Uh, just last March, uh, quite a, a very strong speech by, by Vice President Bar uh, Biden, uh, which was very critical of the legal and political systems in Moscow, um, and in particular, the treatment of other clubs in the Magnitsky cases, uh, several statements by Hillary, and so on. But again, what's interesting also about this is the Russian reaction has been much more muted on these things than before. Um, and as I say, this, it seems to me this is in part because I think they see a, slightly, they see a bigger stake in the relationship um, uh, and therefore want to manage some of these issues more than they did before. Um, but also, and I refer to this also, the sense that, uh, that the Obama administration and therefore the reset are, are, um, are vulnerable. Um, it's quite clear that, that they're, they're, I think that they're trying to be careful not on the one hand, not to undermine the administration. Uh, because they see it as, sub as subject to a lot of political pressure in Washington. Um, uh, and they're worried about what might come after him if, if, uh, if he loses the next election. But also, I think what we're starting to see is the beginning of some hedging behavior. Um, that is, is that you know, there's more and more serious attention to, well, if he does lose, then <coughs> um, Now, um, uh, so I think what we've seen is something is, that reflects both the, the, the greater stakes that, both, that the two sides, Russia and the United States, see, but also in, this, in the relationship, but also there's this sense that the process is far from solidified and that the interests um, of both sides um, and the vulnerabilities of, of the process require pretty careful managing. 